about variations of modern bass technique, my interpretation of what modern bass techniques are. And what we're gonna do is some bass and drum stuff, and then do some actual stuff with the three of us. Uh, uh, cats, bass players, bass players are always caught up on technique. And usually, within the context of them doing the technique and focusing on technique and not the pocket, they don't have no pocket, literally. And we, we've all seen those type of bass players who play all day long, phenomenal. Put them in a band context, fall apart. But a lot of that is just not actually from them being caught up in technique. You have to actually have a concept within, the, within the, you know, your, the realm of your individuality as a bass player. You, you know, like can't get caught up too much in uh, the clone thing. It's six bass players, six bass players that has uh, had the biggest impact on me. Uh, John Aladdin Takuma. Uh, Doug Wimbish. Doug Wimbish is the only bass player in my lifetime, with my ears and my brain, that has ever left an impact on me. The only bass player. Uh, Ralph Armstrong. He was he was beyond pivotal in my my formative years as a pocket player. Uh, Bernard Edwards and uh, Chuck Rainey and James Jamerson. Uh, when I was young, speaking of Chuck, when I was young, my parents had all these albums. You know, you know. We were young, you're not reading anything. You're just like, wow, who was that, who was that? Every time you look around, I would like double check or triple check the liner notes. And there was this cat named, aside from Jamerson, there was this cat named Chuck Rainey. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's cool as hell. That's cool as hell, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But Chuck had an incredible impact on me. It might not show today. And the reason it might not show today is because my thing is always, it's always been to be myself. But everywhere I go, sessions, whatever, Chuck, Jamerson, and the other guys I mentioned, they're always hovering somewhere in my space. And uh, like I say, Chuck, and he's, he's here, of course, and it's like, and, and we've talked about this a million times before, Chuck, you've had, you've had an incredible impact on me as a bass player, seriously. And I just want to say thank you, you know? I mean, man, much love to you, man. So what I'm going to do, me, not the guitar player, me and the bass player, I mean the drummer. We're just gonna kick off a little groove, and then we're gonna play an actual song for you. And what we're gonna do the uh, the interplay between the bass and the drums. This is all improvised, but to give you an idea of what the focus should be as a bass player. And uh, if I mess up, so what? It's live. You know. I mean, I'm being honest. I don't. I don't care. I honestly don't care. And I don't care. Cats put too much. You know. See, the, the imperfections within the context of the music is usually the actual music. Because if you're improvising or you're doing something off, straight off of your head, there is no time to think. And I'm going to show some, some of that today, how I walk the tightrope with the techniques in the pocket. My main focus is to listen with my ears, however this stuff scrambles around in my brain, but to maintain the groove. Man, I'm going to be honest, I am depressed if, if it's not grooving. And you have to have a, 
It's not about just the bass player groove. You have to have an incredible drummer with you. I've been working with, this is Will McCraven on drums. <coughs> A young cat, I'm gonna be honest, sometimes you get on my nerve. <laughs> man, I be just wanna don't I'm a league, I be wanna man, I be wanna shoot him, but man, I've been to the joint, I know what that's like, I don't wanna go back. So that was a, that was a deterrent. You know, it's like, but see, if I had never been to the penitentiary, then I'd be like, well, I'm, I'm a stab. Him. <laughs> push him down some stairs. But I can't push him down stairs because the way society is today, there are cameras everywhere. So that's a deterrent in itself. Yeah. Right, right. See, so if something happens to him between now and time, you know, I, I didn't do it. So kick off something, and just off the top of head, please, Mr. Good Top Player, I know how you guys want to just run out the gate. Just chill for a moment. All right, it's all you will. who actually know me, what I'm about to say, they know about, I'm being totally honest. It comes from, like I say, when we young, and you're listening to this, these, these records, whether it's rock, whatever the genre is, it what moves you, you start investigating. A lot of, you know, I don't want to take nothing away from the younger cats today, but they really don't, a lot of them don't dig in, like we said. And I'm going back to Chuck Ray, seriously, seriously. One of the, one of the tunes that really did it for me with, uh, in regards to uh, a lot of this stuff, but uh, I Want You by Marvin Gaye. And I used to be like, man, I used to be like just, and then you know, I'm young, and then I, my first girlfriend, she wanted to kick me to the curb. And you know what, Chuck, you bogus, man, because I used to be playing, playing the grooves off that record. I want you. <laughs> but at the same time, while I'm crying over this girl, I'm like, man, that Chuck is killing, man, that bass is killing. You know, yeah. but, uh, and I'm being honest, you know, her name was Charlotte, man. <laughs> woo! She was woo! She's actually here today. Oh no! <laughs> no, but, but I'm being honest. You know, I, I, was, I was going through my little phase, crying and whining, and I warned you, man. It was it was like that groove, you know, just killing. You forgot you know? all about it, then. Huh? Yeah, you know. But, no, but all jokes aside, I'm being totally honest. But it, it goes back to you know to answer the question. It's your interpretation of groove. I think a lot of times the cats just get more into their own thing. And that's why I did playing with Will. I mean, I'm joking about, you know, I want to kill him. I kind of joking about that. <laughs> he kind of, he's trying to it, it develop his own voice. And that's, that speaks to me. That's important to me. And the same thing with Malik. I've been knowing Malik forever. You know, this is Malik Worthy on guitar. He's worked with everybody. Prince, George, Clinton, everybody. You know, and, he, and he's still playing guitar. It's like he's still hanging in there. You know, but it goes back to that pocket as a bass player. Groove, 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 groove. 